Hey, welcome to the demo and walkthrough of the Second Brain template. If you're here, it's probably because you're on my YouTube channel and you're curious about how I use the Para method created by Tiago Forte as my second brain in Notion. Or you're interested in Para and second brain and you just want to have a template so you can get it set up quicker. So I'm going to cover a little bit about the modules in here and how to set it up with this template, as well as how I use it in my setup. So high level, there's the Knowledge Hub. The Knowledge Hub is working together with the Notion Web Clipper. So the way I use the Notion Web Clipper and the Knowledge Hub is that when I'm browsing the internet or I have loads of articles open, I can use the Web Clipper and it will put it straight into my Knowledge Hub, keeping track of everything that I'm looking at online. And then I can start to tag things like the status of the thing. Do I need to review it? Do I need to summarize it? Do I need to watch it? So there's action steps there. And it also, when it clips, puts the URL straight into here so I can revisit it really quickly. And sometimes with articles, it actually pulls all the text off of the website and puts it into your Notion setup. The actions database is for small tasks, things that you have to get done. And I generally use this with a reminder inside so that on my phone, the task can buzz me and say, hey, uh, get back to person or uh, fill out that application form. Tasks are then paired to projects. And here I've left two views for you. One is the default view and one is the Kanban view. So you can see what projects you have to do and they're in process and to get done. And then in the areas section, you have personal areas and business areas. Here's some that I've left for you, but you may wanna just delete them and change them depending on which areas you're looking at in your life. The key distinction between projects and areas is that projects have end dates and areas are parts of your life which are going to be continually um, maintained and looked after. Things like personal finance, it doesn't really stop as a project, um, it's always ongoing. Then the resources section is for any great PDFs that you find, any business processes and templates that you create, um, any books perhaps want to live in the resources section. So. I'll show you a little bit more in my setup, how I collect all my resources. And this just makes it really easy to find everything that you want to share out with friends and distribute. The archive is really a place to bring anything that doesn't feel like it has a correct categorization. Um, we don't want to just delete everything. Sometimes there's stuff we want to harvest and recover from um, our old setups or stuff that just doesn't make sense anymore or, or a dead project. Uh, we tend to, I tend to leave it in the archive. And then finally, the notes section, which is my primary um, intake from if I have a thought or I read something from a book I want to capture, I jump on my phone and go into the notes is my default page that I go to. And I just put stuff in. Um, and then I say what status the note is taken. And I also have left you kind of a overview of what progressive summarization is, which is a note-taking technique that maximizes um, the value you get out of your notes. So these are all the moving parts in the template, but how do they actually fit together? Well, let's have a look at uh, my setup. Here you can see the Knowledge Hub, if it will load. And the distinction between the Knowledge Hub and the notes is that the Knowledge Hub is more like what I'm taking in from the online world and being filtered down into my uh, awareness. So I have things like online courses here, I've marked articles, and then I can tag which area this thing is that I'm looking at is. Um, so these three things were um, in the area of machine learning. This is something that I'm looking at and machine learning isn't a project, it's something that I'm gonna be continually looking at. So I actually use my areas somehow as like a tag. Um, you don't have to do that, but this is how I've set it up. Then that's the knowledge jump. Then I have the notes section here. 
Um, this is really my brain dump area. Um, I also rank it by the date it was created. So I can say, well, there was something about two weeks ago that I remember, um, I'll jump back there. And this is again, tagging to the relevant uh, area. If I go into my projects area, I have my projects split up by type. Sometimes I'm creating more resources. Sometimes they're tech problems I'm looking at so for certain businesses that I work on. Um, that's a list of projects there. The areas. So these are another kind of category of areas that I've added, um, which you can if you want. But I have my research areas, things I'm broadly interested in. Um, and then I have change views for business areas, things that I'm paid for, um, and then more personal areas, things like book reading lists and learning languages and my learning. The resources area is then a list of resources that um, are tagged to which area they're relevant to, lots of marketing stuff there, um, some product management stuff. Um, as you can see, this is kind of where all of my business processes and templates live. So if I want to start a project, I just pull a bunch of resources together and say, I'm going to use them in this new project up here. Um, and this helps me to get it into flow or spin up projects quicker. Then my archive is relatively empty. It's not much going on there because I try to extract what I need. Um, and I've found a place for each thing to live within the power method, which is again, this projects, areas, resources, and archive. So that's how I'm using it in my setup. Um, I hope you guys have a good time using this template um, and find the best way to customize it for your flow and your setup and your um, relevant work. And uh, give me some feedback. Let me know how I can improve it. See ya.